time or another, amen. Some of you may be afraid today. How long is preacher going to preach, amen? Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we all experience fear in uh, some way, shape, fashion, or form. And we're going to discuss that today. Today, we'll look at the background of it, the beginning of it. Tonight, we're going to talk about making the best of fear in a falling world. So making the best of fear. It is something that we deal with. It's inevitable. Uh, and tonight, we're going to talk about how can we make the best of it. But then this morning, we're going to talk about the background of it and uh, the beginning of it. So if you have your Bibles, Proverbs chapter number 1, verse 7. Everybody there say amen. Amen. And he owe me. How many of y'all have never been afraid before? Now, all of us have been afraid of something. You know, some of the biggest, strongest, strapping men that you see are afraid of spiders. You know, they got all this muscle. They got muscle on top of muscle. They ain't got a muscle head. And you put a spider in front of them, they'll jump a thousand miles up in the air. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. I want you to read that with me here. Let's go. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fear in a fallen world can be one of the most crippling of all emotions God has given us. It can prevent us from doing some of the most basic of tasks. However, God wants us to use it to give us knowledge, according to Proverbs 1.7. How do we deal with fear now that the emotion has been altered in a fallen world? It's still there. It is. We have to reckon with it. Uh, most of what I say today is going to be basic information, but you and I will need to get past the fear factor of fear in order to do the things that God would have us to do in a fallen world. The word fear appears 395 times in the Bible. Wow. The word afraid, 189 times. The word feared, 75 times. The word fearful, 11 times. And the word fearing, 8 times. I'll read you a quote from George Warren in a devotional that I was doing about fear. He says this, most often we are even killed a balance of emotions allowing us to function normally within our lives. One strong emotion God has given us is fear. One benefit we gain when fear is functioning properly is a sense of security. It is a safety line to keep us from harm. For example, the fear of pain or hurt makes us act carefully in a dangerous situation. Amen. Caution is the offspring of fear. However, fear gone haywire has just the opposite effect. It drowns out other emotions and can ruin our lives. God never intended for fear to bring hurt or harm. In its proper bounds, fear is a friend and not a foe. But I venture to say that many today are crippled by fear. And you're crippled by fear in a fallen world. And you've got to reckon with why you're afraid mm -hmm. and what can it do. Talk about this morning, the background of it, the beginning of it, then tonight, making the best of it. And I think God wants us to know some basic things about fear in a fallen world. Father, now minister to our hearts. Lord, thank you for those that have joined today to hear the word of God. And Lord, they didn't come to hear me, so I pray that you would speak through me the wonderful works of God. And Lord, speak the truth of this issue of fear. Lord, it is an emotion that we all have. It is something that we all deal with from time to time. And Lord, there are some today that are afraid. I don't know what those fears may be, but you know. Whatever that fear is, I pray by the Spirit of God, you may root it out and deal with it. And, Lord, corral their minds and their emotions to be centered and stayed upon thee. And, uh, Lord, you would make the best and the most out of the fear that they seem to have. Uh, work in the heart of that man, woman, boy, or girl that is struggling about a fear of whether they're born again today. Uh, maybe they're afraid uh, if they're even saved at all, if heaven is their home, or even if you love them. 
And God, I pray that you would go past their fear and show them the cross and show them Jesus Christ who died for their sins, was buried and risen again, that they could be saved and they don't have to fear that because you've already proven your love to them. And Lord, inspire them and convict them and bring them to the precious bleeding side of Jesus Christ to confess their sins. But may they not fear whether you love them or not. Might they instead fear dying without you. And Lord, with that fear, call on you to be saved because that fear is the beginning of knowledge. And for others that are saved that have other fears, Lord, meet the need of that man, a woman, boy, or girl this morning. And they may sense your love and your leading in their life. And you may bring an end to the fear that they have. And Lord, and bring them to a, a place of healing in their life from that fear that has crippled them. Each one of us in here, Lord, has a fear of some sort. And I pray you would minister like only you can to each need here by the Holy Spirit's power. And we'll thank you for what you're going to do this morning. Uh, bless the activities and the song and the message that it contains. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Carmen. I appreciate that. Just one touch. Let the Lord take over. Amen. And uh, you know, that's what you have to do with your fears is uh, to let God take over. And uh, you've got to reckon with your fears first and foremost. And hopefully by the end of uh, the morning, you'll be more in tune and more in touch with uh, the fear that you may have, what it is doing in your life, what it has done. And uh, what God wants to do with that fear. Every last one of us has a fear uh, of some sort, even if it's a minute fear. Uh, we all have one, and I don't know about you, but I have mine. I was just talking to uh, Miss Jennings the other day. She was in the hospital. Of course, she had the, the stent put in her heart, and I told her, I said, you know, I'm preaching about fear on uh, Sunday. I said, what's your greatest fear? She said, you know, I've got so many of them. Uh, but she said, the one fear, I guess, that ranges above the rest, she says, the fear of having my legs chopped off. And I thought, I said, well, that's a strange fear. And I said, well, why would you have a fear of having your legs chopped off? She said, when I was a little kid, there was a, a lady that lived next door to us, and she said uh, her legs were chopped off because she was a diabetic. And uh, because of her diabetes, uh, they had to chop her legs off, and she said, that has always I've been a, a great fear of mine. And I said, well, why would that be a fear to you? She said, because I'm diabetic. And it made sense then. Uh, and so from a child, she had that fear, being a child with diabetes, that that could happen. Every one of us has a fear of some sort. But today we're considering the basic subject of fear uh, in a fallen world. And before we actually get into things, let me give you some uh, background of fear in a fallen world. Some background of fear in a fallen world. There are two basic types of fear that we have now that we have a fallen world. We have a healthy fear and an unhealthy fear. Yes, sir. A healthy fear in a fallen world is going to keep us from danger and keep us balanced emotionally, and that's God's desire. Healthy fear is a basic God-given emotion in a fallen world to protect you and to protect me, and we all have it. Just think about your children during a thunderstorm. Uh, they kind of get a little afraid about that. Uh, the, the loud noises of a child. If you have a loud noise by a child, one of the most classic ones is if a balloon bursts near a child, that child will have a fit. I've seen some adults have fits too. Uh, you know, if you're from the city in the hood, you think it's a gunshot or something, amen, and, and it'll scare you. And so that produces in us a caution and a protection. And so the good fear is that which protects us, or a healthy fear in a fallen world protects us. There, there's also a bad or an unhealthy fear in a fallen world. And this is going to keep us from doing what we should, whilst the good fear keeps us from danger, the bad fear keeps us from doing what we should and keeps us imbalanced emotionally. That's not God's desire. God desires balance in your life and in my life. Bad or unhealthy fear in a fallen world tends to paralyze us. Whilst one good fear protects us, the other paralyzes us. Bad or unhealthy fear can be the result of physical or chemical imbalances in the body of some sort, physiologically speaking, and may require diagnosis and medical attention. However, on the other hand, some bad or unhealthy fear may be the result of guilt from sin like Adam and Eve. Amen. Still there are other causes why we have this bad or unhealthy fear in a fallen world. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about. A healthy fear of water will encourage me to take uh, proper safety precautions around water. Yep. Unhealthy fear makes me afraid to even take a bath. Amen. Wow. Healthy fear of electricity will encourage me to take proper safety precautions when handling electrical items. Yes. Unhealthy fear makes me afraid to even turn on the lights. Whoa. Healthy fear of fire will encourage me to take proper safety precautions when uh, I'm handling fire. Unhealthy fear makes me afraid to even light a match or to go cook on the stove. And so there is a healthy fear and there is an unhealthy fear in a fallen world. Uh, but both are there and you have one if not both of them. That's right. With that said, I, I went to... Wikipedia, and I said, what are some of the fears that are out there? And I could not imagine the fears that are out there. I've got a list of phobias or fears from A to Z. 
And some of these I can see, and others I'm like, whoa. Ablutophobia is the fear of bathing, washing, or cleaning. If someone smells around you, they may be ablutophobic. Acluophobia is a fear of darkness. How many of y'all are afraid of darkness? That's acluophobia. Acrophobia is a fear of heights. How many of y'all are afraid of heights? Now, I got a respect for heights, but I'm not afraid of heights. I got, I got a big time respect for it. This is one that is most common. Agoraphobia. That is those that have panic attacks. Agoraphobia is a fear of places or events where escape is impossible or when help is unavailable, fear of open spaces or being in public places, or fear of leaving a safe place. We call that a panic attack, and many have that. There's algophobia. I think I have that. It's a fear of pain. I think many of you can identify with that one. There is aquaphobia, fear of water. Those getting baptized today hopefully are not aquaphobics. Amen. Aquaphobia is a, uh, it, it, it says it's a scientific property that makes chemicals averse to interaction with water. And so you don't want to get in water. Arachnophobia is a fear of spiders. My children definitely have that. We had a tarantula at the house the other day and they were afraid to even come out of the house. I said, just step on them. They might get carried away by the spider. Amen. Amen. There is astrophobia, fear of thunder and lightning. Faith has that. Atikophobia, fear of failure. Oh, yeah. Autophobia, fear of being isolated or being alone. I don't have that problem. Amen, Pastor. Amen. When you're around people all the time, you kind of relish that sometimes. Amen. Yeah. There's a chrono, chronophobia, fear of time and moving forward. Some immature men have that. Claustrophobia, which we're aware of, a fear of having no escape being closed in. Serge, I definitely have this. Cyberphobia, fear of aversion to computers and of learning new technologies. I've got cyberphobia for sure. I used to have this before I met my wife, decidophobia, fear of making decisions. I didn't know there was such a thing. Dysposophobia, fear of getting rid of or losing things. I mean, y'all hate throwing stuff away, you're a hoarder. You have dysposophobia. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. Ergosophobia, fear of work. <laughs> Some folks have that one, amen. amen. <laughs> but our unemployment rate, a whole lot of them got it, amen. amen. Frigophobia, fear of becoming too cold. Yes, sir. I, I can't even begin to, to pronounce this one, but uh, it's frigatriscadecophobia. And many of you probably had that on Friday. It's fear of Friday the 13th. Amen. But it's frigatriscadecophobia. Yeah. Amen. Gammaphobia. A lot of folks have this one. Fear of marriage or commitment. Men have that one. Gammaphobia. This one shocked me. I didn't know this one uh, had a name. Hateophobia. Fear of hell. Amen. Hades. Fear of hell. Hateophobia. Some of you may have this one, halitophia, fear of bad breath. <laughs> Hemophobia, fear of blood. Yes. Here's another one, Serge. I need you to pronounce this one. Hexacasia, hexacontaca, hexaphobia. <laughs> fear of the number 666. Six, six. Six, six, yes. Hypnophobia, fear of sleep. I don't have that problem. Amen, <laughs> Some of you may have this one, lipophobia, fear of avoidance of fats and foods. Oh, More fat in the food, the better for amen, me. Amen. Pastor, amen. Mysophobia, this is a fear of germs or contamination or dirt. Necrophobia, fear of death. These are all real phobias that people have. Now, I'm not even reading all of them. I'm just put, picking out several that y'all might identify with. Um, no, nomophobia, fear of being out of mobile contact. 
Mobile phone contact. I didn't know there was such a thing. No, it's recent, amen. No, no more phobia, fear of being out of mobile phone contact. The young people must have that. Because I, I, I know us older folk don't have that, amen. Uh, nosophobia, fear of contracting a disease. Uh, nyctophobia, fear of darkness. Obesophobia, I'm sure you know what that means. Fear of obesity, amen. Panphobia. This one gets me. Panphobia, fear of everything or constant fear of unknown. Pharmaco pharmacophobia, fear of medications. Phobophobia, fear of having a phobia of fears. So you're afraid of having a fear of fear. Pyrophobia, fear of fire. Radiophobia, fear of radioactive rays or x-rays. Somniophobia, fear of sleep. I don't have that one either. Amen. Spectrophobia, fear of ghosts. Uh, I mean, you go on and on. A technophobia, fear of technology. I may have that one. Thermophobia, fear of heat. If you live in Arizona, you better not have that one. Uh, this one shocked me. Uranophobia, fear of heaven. Uranophobia, fear of heaven. And then there's one they, did, they didn't give a name to. They just call it workplace phobia, fear of the workplace. Amen. Amen. And uh, there's a list from A to Z, and then they quantify it in medical terms and animal terms. And I mean, a whole list of just phobias. You know what that tells me? We live in a world of fear. Yes, we're surrounded by fear. If fear is on every hand, I read in that Psalm, Psalm 53, it says fear when there is no fear. Amen. Uh, but some of these are real. Some of these are imagined. Some of these are, are in our heads. Others are, they're, they're real. But you know what the bottom line of it is? If it's real to you, it's real. That, that, that's, that's the bottom line. If it's real to you, it's real. And so it matters not what somebody else says. If you believe it's real, in your mind, it's real, whether it's real or not. You have made it to be real. And so you look at the background of fear in a fallen world. There, there is healthy fear, but then there is bad or unhealthy fear. One is going to keep us from doing what we ought to do. One is going to keep us from danger. One is going to keep us balanced. One is going to make us in balance. And so with that said, knowing the background of fear and looking at Wikipedia and knowing that everybody has a fear, let's notice the beginning of fear in a fallen world. The beginning. Did you know that there was no bad or unhealthy fear in the beginning? Y'all looking at me like, there was no bad or unhealthy fear? There was no, but what was there to be afraid of? You didn't have to be afraid of dark. You didn't have to be afraid of animals. You didn't have to be afraid of spiders. You didn't have to be afraid of God. You didn't have to be afraid of death. There was no death. You didn't have to be afraid of pain. There was no pain. You didn't have to be afraid of sorrow. There was no sorrow. There was no thing to be afraid of. That's all come since the world has fallen now. And that's why we're talking about fear in a fallen world. But since we all have these fears as a God-given emotion, it's still intact and in place in our lives. It's altered. God obviously then wants us to use it for his glory and our benefit. Amen. Where did it go wrong? Notice Proverbs 1-7. You should still be there. The background of fear should lead us to the beginning of bad or unhealthy fear. We still have this emotion of fear. What should it do according to Proverbs 1-7? The Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. In other words, then, uh, fear of the Lord should be the start of knowledge. It should keep us straight. It should keep us on the right path. It should put us where we need to be. And fear in Proverbs 1-7 deals with a reverence for God, who he is, and what he can do. And consequently, we should listen to him and obey him. By the way, I'll give you a few definitions here. Fear there in this word means reverence. Uh, for God. Uh, and then it says the beginning. That means it's the principal thing before everything else. And it says this fear, this reverence of God or of the Lord is the principal thing or the very beginning of knowledge or awareness. But it says fools or silly people uh, despise or disrespect wisdom and instruction. The word instruction there has many definitions. It means to have restraint, to have a check on yourself, to have correction, to have teaching, to have rebuke, or to have warning, to have re 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 reproof. So in other words, fear is the beginning of knowledge. Fear is where God wants us to start to begin to know what we ought to do in this fallen world. 
If you've got fear, then what you need to do is go to God. Amen. And go to his word and say, okay, God, I've got a fear. What do I need to do with the fear that I have? Amen. Amen, Pastor. Hey, some of you may have a fear of losing your husband, fear of losing your wife, fear of losing your children, fear of losing your job. Mm. You know, and oftentimes you have no say so over those things. Amen. But fear is the beginning of knowledge. And so now if I've got this fear, if I've got a bad fear, if I've got something going on, I need to go to the beginning of it or where did it all happen at? Uh, keep in mind that bad or unhealthy fear uh, came after the fall and now God needs to give uh, the writer in Proverbs here the knowledge on how to deal with this fear. And he says the beginning of knowledge starts with a fear of the Lord. And by the way, fear should bring you to several questions. The first question is this. It should lead you to question, when did bad fear begin? And it began with sin. We all, we all know that. Go back to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, because we saw the background of it. We all have it, the beginning of it. Genesis chapter number 3. Because fear is the beginning of knowledge. Genesis chapter 3, of course there was no bad fear at this time. But Genesis chapter 3, uh, we're going to see something here that, that happens. Because fear should lead us to question, when did this bad fear begin? It began with sin. We need to go back to this beginning of bad fear. Genesis 3, and notice verse number 8. It says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Right here we see them hiding of themselves because there's a problem. And by the way, if you come down here to verse number 10. And he said, I'm at first, read, read verse 9. The Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. That word afraid, there's the first time any version of the word afraid or fear or fearing is used in the Bible. Up until that point, there was none. There was no need for none. Why? They were on good terms with God. But then there, there was a point here when something happened and Adam said, I heard your voice. I was afraid. I was frightened because I was naked and I hid myself. So fear should lead me to question, when did my bad fear begin? For Adam and Eve, it started right here. By the way, you go back to the beginning, they had a vibrant relationship. The relationship between God and Adam and Eve was very good. It was a, a, a relationship of vitality. They could talk to each other. They could walk with each other. They had a relationship. But then something happened with that vibrant relationship. That relationship was violated. And it was violated down there in verses number uh, 6. It says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also to her husband with her and uh, he did eat. This vibrant relationship then was violated. Uh, and uh, let me tell you something. Every time you have a vibrant relationship and if it's violated, something's going to happen. Fear. They had a vibrant relationship. It was good. Hey, husbands and wives, you got a good relationship, and then somebody violates the relationship, whether it's by what you said or what you did. And guess what? Fear sets in. There's a separation that sets in between you and your children. Guess what? You got a vibrant relationship. Somebody violates that relationship. There is something that happens there. There's a vacancy. What happened? Adam said, I was afraid, and I went and hid myself. Why? Because I was naked. The vibrant relationship was violated. The voice of reason came in in verse number 9. The Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Somebody wants to make it right. God's trying to make it right, but there's a vacancy there. But there's something that had to happen to make this relationship right. Adam had to volunteer the information. Amen. He said, Where you at? What'd you do? Notice verse 11. And he said, Who told thee thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Albeit he went around the back door to answer the question. He did answer the question. Amen. He blamed it on the wife, but ultimately he fessed up. So what happened? The, the relationship that was vibrant was violated. The voice of reason came in and said, where you at? There was a vacancy. He went away, but there was a volunteering. What happened? Fear set in. 
What happened? Sin produced guilt. Guilt produced fear. Fear made him go run and hide. By the way, it'll do the same thing for you. Sin produces guilt. Guilt produces fear. Fear makes you want to run and hide. And so the first question that should be asked is when did bad fear begin? It began right here with sin in the garden. Let me ask you this question. When did your fear first begin? Maybe it began as a child from something that happened. Whether it was true or untrue. Maybe it's from a story someone told you. Or maybe it's a fear of height because you fell off of a building or something of that nature. I don't know, but your fear began someplace. And this fear should lead you to question, when did it begin? For Adam and Eve, it was sin that, that, that started it. Second question you should ask is about fear. A fear should lead us to an investigation. Why did this bad fear happen to them? It happened to them in verse 6 because they disobeyed God and they ate of the fruit which they should not have eaten. And fear should lead us not only to uh, an uh, investigation and a question. But it should lead us to some precision. Where did bad fear begin? For them, they can always trace it back to the garden. They knew they bit of the fruit. If they were to talk to their grandchildren, they'd say, Mom and Daddy, what happened? You know, we was in that garden. And we had a vibrant relationship with God. But there was a violation in the relationship. You, me and your mother ate of that apple, ate of that fruit. And when we violated that, uh, we vacated. But there was a voice of reason that came. And we had to volunteer the information. Mom and Daddy, where did sin begin for you? Where did it happen? Why did it happen? It led them to some questions. When did bad fear begin with sin? Why did bad fear begin? Investigation, they ate. Precision, they could go right back to the garden atmosphere. And then fear should lead us to a resolution. What to do with bad fear? And it's the same thing for us. Adam and Eve ate of the fruit. They had to fess up in verse number 12. I did eat were the last three words in verse number 12. So for Adam and Eve, their bad fear started with sin. And guilt followed. They ran and hid. And the resolution was to confront it and allow God to cover it by the blood. Notice verse 7. The eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They tried to cover themselves. But notice what God did for them in verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So what happened? God knew that there was a vibrant relationship and there was a violation. He knew they had vacated, and so his voice came to bring them back. But they had to be the ones to volunteer the information. They had to be the ones to say, we broke your command. If not, they would still live in constant fear of God. Still live in constant fear. I wonder if God's here. I wonder if God's around. I wonder when God's going to show up. Some of you live that way now. Preacher knocks on your door. Oh no, it's the preacher. Hide the liquor. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Throw away the cigarettes. Hey, how y'all doing? We just got by the fellowship. Oh no, turn off that wicked movie. Yes, sir, Pastor. Fear. Why? Fear produces guilt. Guilt makes you want to go hide. And it all started with sin. So what are we saying here? The beginnings of fear should lead us to question, when did the fear begin? It should lead us to an investigation, why did this fear begin? It should lead me to some precision. Where did this bad fear start at? Where did it come from? I should be able to go and track, track it down, but then it should lead me to a resolution. Let God deal with it just like he let God deal with Adam and Eve's. Let me ask you the question today. Do you have a fear of the Lord? It's the beginning of knowledge. And God wants to give you the same thing he gave Adam and Eve. They had this investigation. They had this precision. They had this resolution. They got right with God. Now your fear may or may not be based upon sin. I don't know. It might be and it might not be. It may be hereditary. It may be in your genes. You may have some unfounded fear. You may have some founded fear. Let me tell you something. God didn't want you to live with fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so I've, if I've got fear, I know it didn't come from God because God doesn't want me to be afraid. What time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, Isaiah said in 12 too. And so if I have fear, it's not coming from God. 
And so there's got to lead me to uh, a, a question it and to investigation and a precision and a resolution. God, I want you to deal with it because God wants to give you knowledge on how to be free of fear. And by the way, we're talking about that tonight, making the best of fear. If we investigate our fear, we're going to find out some basic things about fear. And that is God wants to show us where it's coming from. And God wants to rid us of it if we would allow him. Now think about this. Would you want your child to walk around in fear all the time? Try as I may, I tell faith. Faith, you don't need to be afraid of Mr. Norton's train. Trains run on tracks. Tracks don't run through houses. His train is not going to get you. Brother Norton, you know where she was at this morning? In the room. I'm afraid of Mr. Norton's train. And we have told her that trains don't go off the track unless they're derailed. Then they ain't going far. But you know what she's got? She hears that, she hears that rumbling and the room shakes. And she's like, uh-oh, the train is coming. Now, it hadn't come yet, but she thinks it's coming. She's got a genuine fear. Mr. Norton has tried to do everything he could. He brought her pictures of a train, amen. Maybe he's got to put her on a train, brother, or something. I don't know, amen. Let her touch the train, amen. amen. But she's got a real fear of the train. Mm -hmm. I tried to make it easy by telling her, Mr. Norton is on the train. Look, at, he's okay. He's just, you know, blowing the horn to wave at you, you know. Amen. It's all right. You know, don't, don't be afraid. But she's got this fear. Go back to Proverbs 1, 7, because we see Adam and Eve had this problem. And their problem was sin. And with this fear, there's some things that we want to make sure that we get resolved as well. Adam and Eve had to repent of their sin. They had to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and receive forgiveness of sin. You say, preacher, I don't see the gospel over there. You see the shedding of blood, don't you? You see the innocent animal, don't you? Amen. It's the same for them in the Old Testament as it is for us in the New Testament. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And they had covered themselves with some fig leaves, and God said, get rid of that, and you're going to take the skin of this animal to cover the blood. Amen. Looking forward to the cross of Jesus Christ. What am I saying? Most of our fears can be settled at the cross. Because God didn't want you to be afraid. He didn't want you to be afraid. But you've got to figure out what you're afraid of and why. And is it founded? By the way, many have a fear of death. I didn't read that one. But many folks have a fear of death. Adam had to volunteer to own up to his sin. And to do that, he had to get past the fear of owning up to it. What did he do? He hid. And when God came calling, he had to actually come out and own up to it. I was afraid and I hid myself, but here I am. What, what am I talking about? When it comes to fear, you got to own up to what are you afraid of and why? Something brought it on. For them, it was disobeying God and eating of the, of the fruit. And then they sold up these fig leaves and they hid themselves. Amen. And God said, why? Many are afraid of death. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews 5, 12, uh, Romans 5, 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, that's Adam, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Why do many people fear death? It's the fear of the unknown. I've never died before. And so because I've never died before, I have a fear of the unknown. I never planted a church before. You know what I had at planting a church? A fear of planting a church. I had never pastored before, and so I had a fear of pastoring. Why? It's the fear of the unknown. I've never died, so I've got a fear of the unknown. But God says fear is the beginning of knowledge. And if you want an answer, I'll give it to you. Once you die, you go to heaven and you go to hell. See, it's settled. I don't have to be afraid of it anymore. That's right, Pastor, it is. Then why are people still afraid of dying? That's right, Pastor. That's the next point. People are afraid of dying because, now by the way, I too have a fear of death. But it's not the death that you're thinking about. I have a fear of how I'm going to die. I don't want to have a gun to point blank and somebody shoot me and say, all right, uh, this is your last words. I don't want to go like that. I might actually live through that for several hours in pain. I don't want to go like that. I don't want to get run over by Mr. Norton's train. That could be quite painful. I don't want to get hit by a semi-tractor truck trailer and go up under its wheels. 
So the pain of it, I got that, that phobia right there. Algophobia. I don't like pain. But the fact of where I'm going to go, it's not a question for me. I know where I'm going. I just don't want the pain associated with going. Amen. Lord, let me go in my sleep. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Amen. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Take it, Lord. Amen. While I'm asleep or going to rapture. Amen. But pain, algophobia, Ken. I don't like pain. I, I go into convulsions at a hangnail. <laughs> So, the fear of death doesn't bother me. But the element of the unknown for some in regards to where you're going to go afterwards, because whether you believe in a life hereafter, guess what? There is a life hereafter. Yes, Why? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. God tells us there's a hereafter. And he says there's a hell hereafter and there's a heaven hereafter. And I will go in one or the other. So I don't mind dying and going to heaven because I know I'm not going to hell. It's just the pain of it all. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Romans 10.13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you think about Romans 10.13, the very last word says saved, which in and of itself has an element of danger. How can I be saved if there is no danger? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means I'm saved or rescued from something. Something endangered me. There was something that I was fearful of, and I ran and fled from it. Yes, For Adam and Eve, they fled from God. Yes, what is it for you? You know why they fled from God? Sin. Now, you may be here today, and you say, well, I'm not fleeing from God. Are you fleeing to him? Wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The element of danger in the word save, which brings with it fear. There's something to be feared. There's something to be saved from. There is a death. There is a hell. There is my sin to call into question. But my Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. There's my fear. I have to perish in this place called hell to pay for my sins just like Adam and just like Eve. They were afraid. They hid themselves. It says shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. I don't have to be afraid of dying. Why? Jesus Christ is my Savior. My question to you this morning tonight we're going to talk about Making the best of fear. We still, you know, even if we're saved, we still have our left with the fear. And we're going to talk about that tonight. But my main emphasis today is your fear may be because you don't know what the unknown has for you. By the way, I had a quote unquote fear of church, Kenny. I thought if I went to church, they was going to tell me to stop my sin, which I ain't had no business stopping. I wasn't going to stop that. And they're going to tell me how to live, and so I don't want to go to church. So I was afraid to go to church because the preacher going to step on my toes and tell me how wrong amen. I was in sin. Amen. Can I get an amen? Some of y'all was. Amen. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. So you got folks that will stay home from church because they got a fear the preacher may actually expose them and call them out and call their sin out. And so I've got a fear of church. Yes, sir. Perish the thought. Well, why don't you like Adam and Eve and volunteer to get right with God? Right. He's still calling. He's still... Uh, Sending out the trumpet call. Adam, Adam, where art thou? And you're either saying, I, I was naked and I was afraid and so I hid myself. Or you're going to be like Adam and, and say, I did eat. I don't have to be afraid anymore. Amen. This morning, perhaps you've got a fear of dying. Why don't you turn that fear of dying without Christ over to God? You may have the fear of dying and missing heaven. You need to turn that over to God this morning. You may have a fear of a loved one going astray. You need to turn that over to God. You may have a fear of rejection or fear of having bad health or fear of your children's health or fear of witnessing to someone or fear of being robbed in your own home or fear of failure or fear of a, of a failed relationship or fear of being honest with your parents because of what they may say if you tell them the truth or fear of your classmates or fear of bullies or fear of anything you've got to go back and see why you've got this fear but the greatest of the fears you should be concerned about this morning is whether or not you're going to heaven Amen, Pastor. Amen. why 
the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. God wants you to know that. He wants you to know if you died right now, you're going to heaven. God never wants to put you in a quandary as to, well, maybe, or possibly. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. God does not want you and I to be in fear of whether he loves us or not. Jesus Christ stretched his arms out and died on the cross to show his love for you and for me. For God so loved the world that he gave. He was crucified for you. He was buried and he rose again. You don't ever have to fear. Does God love you? I don't care what you did. I don't care where you have gone. I don't care what you have been. I don't care what you have been involved in. I don't care what you have said. Well, I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And your point is, mm -hmm. don't blaspheme him now. Amen. Receive Christ as your Savior. I've committed the unpardonable sin. What is it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He doesn't want you to fear anything that the devil puts in your mind about whether or not he loves you. It's signed, sealed, and delivered at the cross of Calvary. He was put in the tomb. He was raised again the third day for your justification and mine. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thy shalt be saved. God didn't want you to fear that at all. There's one fear that we don't have to worry about is being separated from God if we're saved. We don't ever have to worry about, does God love me? You don't have to worry about that. Is God going to take care of me? You don't have to worry about that. Is God going to be there? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You don't have to worry about that. Is he going to meet my needs? I am the Lord God that healeth thee. You don't have to worry about that. But you better first worry about, do you belong to him? Are you his? Because he'll never forsake his own. I may forsake some other children, but guess what? I ain't going to forsake mine. God will never forsake his own. Amen. I don't know where you're at today. Or what area of fear you need to turn over and settle with God, but it's clear there is a fear that we seem to have. Whether it's healthy or unhealthy, one protects us one paralyzes us. I pray that you will get past the one that paralyzes you and go to the God that wants to free you of the paralysis and who wants to save you and who wants to set you free from the bondage or the captivity that you have. If there is a fear, you've got to ask, Lord, why is it there? When did it begin? Where was I at when it began? What do I need to do? And I'll tell you what you need to do. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Come to God. Come to him and ask him. And if it's salvation, he'll save you. If you repent, if you'll volunteer and fess up like Adam. If he needs to work something out of your heart, he'll bring those issues to the forefront that you need to work on. But you've got to be ready to let him work on it. Amen. Remember, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment, First John says. He that is made perfect in love, he doesn't have fear. I do pray tonight if you've got some fear, you let God settle it in your heart. If you've got this fundamental fear of what happens when you die. I'm not talking about baptism. I'm not talking about giving tithes. I'm not talking about joining this church. Uh, although we're having a baptism, that's great, but that doesn't save you. I'm not talking about being a good person. I'm talking about doing the best you can. I'm talking about keeping the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about repenting of sin and trusting Christ as Savior and only Him. Amen. If you've not done that, all the baptisms in the world are not going to help you. You'll still have fear about the unknown. Yes, You'll still have fear of dying. You'll still have fear of, God, am I going to heaven? Mm -hmm. I don't have to ask that. I know I'm going. Why? The Bible tells me. Get past the first fundamental basic fear. And then tonight, as a saved person, we can make the best of fear. Because we're still going to be left with that emotion in a fallen world. We've got to make the best of it. But the first and foremost, getting saved. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I'm looking around. Those who are getting baptized, you can go ahead and step out at this point. But the rest of us, our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Those that are moving about will be getting ready to be baptized. 
But with our heads bowed and our eyes closed and we're looking around. I don't know about you, but the day of February 3rd, 1991, the day that I got saved, an invitation was given much like this. And a question was asked much like this. If you died today, are you sure you go to heaven? And there was a, a fear of the unknown in my mind, in my heart. I didn't know if I was going to heaven. I thought I was because I was a good person and I was trying to keep the Ten Commandments. I was trying to read my Bible and I thought, well, if I died, I think I might go. But there was a, a certain part of me that was unknown and said, well, I just don't know. I'm not convinced. If that's you here today and you're not sure that heaven is your home, I want to pray for you. And I want to pray that you can get past this phobia, this fear of the unknown. And I want to pray that you would trust God that he would save you. But guess what? I can't save you. And God's not going to save you without you volunteering to come and get it right with him, just like with Adam. And right where you sit, how many would say, Preacher, would you pray for me that I could get past this fear and know that I'm going to heaven? Right where you're at, you raise your hand high, I can see it, and you can, I'll acknowledge it, and you can put it right back down. Right where you're at, man, woman, boy, or girl, all across this auditorium, you raise your hand saying, would you please pray for me, preacher? I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'm concerned about it. Please, if you would, remember me in your prayer. I won't call your name out. I'll just acknowledge that you put your hand up. You're amongst people that love you and people that care about you. Anyone at all? Amen. Amen. I see one hand. You may put it down. Is there another? Join this one. Just being honest before God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Is there another that would join this one? Say, preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe there's another. I'll pray for this one. Oh, please don't let the devil encourage you not to raise your hand. And please don't leave with an unsettled amen. I see another hand. You may put that one down. Is there another? Join these two. Preacher, pray for me this morning. I, I, I'm not sure. I see that hand. That's three. You may put that one down. Is there another? Preacher, pray for me. Again, I won't call you out. I'm not going to come and pick you. I just want to just pray for you. There's three hands raised. Is there a fourth? Amen. I see that one. I see that one. You may put it down. Amen. Thank you very much for your honesty. Is there another? Five hands raised. Amen. I see that one. Six hands. You may put it down. Six hands have been raised. Amen. You may put that one down. Anyone join these six? Just being honest before God. I'll pray for you in just a moment, but the same way Adam had to volunteer. When God said, Adam, Adam, where, where art thou? He said, I hid myself. I was afraid. He said, did you do what I told you not to? Did you eat of the fruit? He said, I did. I did eat. You've got to voluntarily say, preacher, would you show me how I can be saved? You've got to come to me. Say, I'd like to be saved. I can't come to you. I wish I could, but I can't. Father, these hands that have been raised, these six, I pray that you would deal in their hearts. And just like you did with Adam, work with them. Help them to volunteer the fact that they know they've done wrong in your sight. They have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but they don't want that separation. They understand they violate it that relationship and your voice is speaking to them they they have vacated but Lord they want to volunteer that they're sinners and they don't want to, the fear of the unknown they want to get saved and Lord I pray you give them the courage in spite of their fear to come and get it settled I pray they would come forward and, and take my hand and they could get it settled today Lord I pray that whether it's a man whether it's a woman whether it's a boy or whether it's a girl You'd give them the saving faith that they'll need to get it settled today. Thank you for meeting with us. Help us with our fears that we do have. And Lord, minister to our hearts even throughout this invitation. We may settle some things with thee. And we'll thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. If you would like to be saved today, Andrew is playing a hymn of invitation. Why don't you just come down and take my hand and got people standing by that can show you how to be saved. If you're a man, we get a man to show you. If you're a woman, we get a woman to show you. But heads are bowed, eyes are closed, don't looking around. Would you just have the courage to step right out and say, Preacher, I'd like to be saved. I do have a fear, but I want to get past my fears. And I want to get it settled.
Maybe, Christian, you need to come and pray for a loved one that is struggling. Maybe there's a husband, maybe there's a wife, maybe there's a son, maybe there's a daughter. Maybe there's a co-worker struggling with fear. And one of the greatest fears that we can have is a fear of fear. Or preacher, if I come forward and pray, somebody's going to think something of me. Don't think about what others think. Think about what God thinks. Think about what God thinks. How about it? Would you pray for a loved one? You raise your hand saying you're not sure. We can take, take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. Preacher, but I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm right down here. You say, Preacher, I'd like to know whether I, I'm truly saved again. And there's a fear. There's a fear that I have. Man, woman, boy, or girl. Preacher, I'd like to know. You don't have to live with fear. Aren't you glad that God and his greatness and his goodness went seeking for Adam? Just the same God is seeking for you. He doesn't want you to be afraid. He doesn't want you to, be afraid, uh, to have fear. Oh, there's a good fear that protects us. But there's a bad fear that paralyzes us. And that bad fear can paralyze us even from getting saved. Even from trusting Christ as my Savior. You don't want that fear. You want the good fear. How about it? Would you let God deal with your heart today? There'll be a baptism in just a moment. Would you let God speak to your heart? Christians are praying. I don't know about you, but I was too afraid to leave that church that day. I said, I'm going to get this thing settled today. Father, thank you for those precious hands that were raised. Lord, I pray that you would not let them leave here in fear. But they would get it settled today. They would get past the fear of the unknown of death, whether it's heaven or whether it's hell. The other fears can come and go. The fear of uh, heights and the fear of uh, spiders and the fears of waters, those can come and go. But the greatest fear of the unknown is what happens to me when I die. Oh God, may you allow these several that raised their hands to get it settled today. Don't let them leave without having the courage to say, Preach, I'd like to be saved. I want to get it settled today. Lord, give them the boldness to get it settled. I thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. I pray that your hand will be upon everything that we think, everything that we say, and everything that we do. And may you get the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.